Okay, so this week for the pre-lab video, let's talk somewhat about the media that you inoculated before fall break. It's been sitting in the refrigerator waiting for you. So I'm sure you all remember very well that you inoculated uh, several different types of media that we haven't really talked about yet. And what I really want to do is introduce a principle of selective and differential media because the plates that you inoculated last week with various bacterial species um, fit into that category. So for instance, one of the plates that you inoculated is called EMB or eosinophilin blue. This is what the uninoculated plate looks like, kind of a, a grape juice purple type of color. Now, when you inoculated various bacteria onto this, what you're trying to find out is, first of all, are these bacteria gram negative? Because the dyes that are in the eosin methylene blue actually inhibit the growth of most gram positive bacteria. That's why we use the term selective medium. EMB is a selective medium because for the most part only gram negative bacteria will grow on this. It is differential because it has, actually it has two sugars in it. It has sucrose and lactose. I wish they would just leave the sucrose out. I think that just, well, it just confuses me. But for the most part, think about the presence of lactose in this because you can have, so I'm using uh, student plates and so this is actually a good illustration of how not to streak for isolated colonies. But the point, the larger point that I'm trying to make here is that you can see an obvious physiologic difference, phenotypic difference in these two bacterial species. Notice that the bacteria that I'm holding in my left hand has a metallic sheen to it. The colonies have turned kind of a darkish color. What's happened is that the acid that's produced by sugar fermentation has precipitated one of the dyes in this um, eosin methylene blue, specifically the eosin. So eosin is a pH indicator and so it's turning a darker color, a black color with acid. And oftentimes it has that, it gives a metallic sheen. This is characteristic of what you would see for a gram-negative bacterium, excuse me, <laughs> for a lactose-fermenting bacterium, something like E. coli. Something like Salmonella, on the other hand, that does not or is not capable of fermenting lactose, or in this case sucrose either, will still grow on this media because it's a gram-negative bacterium. It's not inhibited by the methylene blue, uh, which does a serious number on gram-positive cells. But because it can't ferment lactose, it's not causing the pH indicator, eosin, to turn black. And so you get clear, clear colonies. So compare that to what the plate looked like to begin with. So that's eosin methylene blue. So one of the important things that you remember for lab practicals and for your unknowns is that eosin methylene blue auger is differential and it's selective. It grows gram negatives and it differentiates them based on whether they can ferment lactose or not. Now, uh, another and I think better type of differential and selective media, which is also very important for your unknown quest shortly, but it's also very important in terms of helping you differentiate bacteria is McConkie auger. So you inoculated several different species onto plates of McConkie, this kind of pretty pink auger. This is the way it looks before you inoculated it. Nice wet <laughs> plate. Now, again, McConkie auger is selective. It only allows, for the most part, gram negatives to grow. Gram positives are inhibited, for the most part, by bile salts. So there are bile salts added to this media to a concentration which makes it difficult for gram positives to grow. But gram negatives will grow just fine in here. There is also a pH indicator in here, um, which will allow you to differentiate based on the ability to ferment lactose. I prefer McConkie auger to EMP, EMB because it has only lactose in it, so there's no confounding 
worry about, well, what's happening with, with sucrose. Again, it's differential because when the bacteria that you've inoculated is capable of fermenting lactose, as this bacterium is, and again, here's the uninoculated media for comparison, it turns acid. So it creates an acid condition because it's fermenting lactose and you get this nice pink color. So it's very easy to differentiate between a lactose fermenter, such as this organism, and a lactose non-fermenter, which will also grow if it's a gram-negative bacterium, but it can't ferment the lactose, so it doesn't cause the pH indicator to turn pink. So this is a very good way to differentiate lactose positive versus lactose negative. In terms of your unknowns, which you'll get this week, remember you're gonna get a mixture a gram negative and a gram positive. And so the first thing that you want to be able to do is to separate those species. So in terms of thinking about a strategy, one thing that you probably want to do is to streak from that mixture onto McConkie auger plate, streak for isolated colonies, with the idea that hopefully your gram positive, your staph or your strep will not grow in this medium, but your gram negative will. So that's one way to, um, to separate these two bacteria. So even if your isolated colony skills is not so good, such as student X from, from this lab section, you may be able to isolate your gram negative in this, in this manner. You can also do this on the EMB auger because the EMB auger will also allow for the gram negatives to grow, but not the gram positives. So, Another media that you inoculated last week, which is also differential and selective, was the mannitol salt auger. So the mannitol salt auger, you can tell from the name, two of the most important components are the carbohydrate mannitol and salt. The salt is pretty important, or is the critical component in terms of the selective nature of mannitol salt auger, because mannitol salt auger is, like McConkie, like eosin methyl and blue, a selective and differential medium. It's selective because, for the most part, staphylococci, well, I shouldn't say for the most part, staphylococci are capable of growing at 7.5% sodium chloride. That's the amount of sodium chloride that's included in this media. Most gram negatives don't handle that very well. So most gram negatives will not grow on this. Staphylococci grow just fine. Other gram positives, not so well either. So when you get your unknown, as well as streaking for isolated colonies on a McConkie auger plate, you probably want to streak for isolated colonies on a mannitol salt auger plate. Hopefully, your gram negative won't grow, but your gram positive will if your gram positive is Staphylococcus. Streptococci don't grow on here very well. Some of the Streptococci actually, and perhaps even one that's in the list of possible gram positives, Streptococci may, may grow on here as well. So you can't definitely say when you get growth on here that it's a Staphylococcus. You'll have to do some further tests. But so it's, it's selective because of the high salt concentration, but it's differential based on the ability to ferment mannitol. So when an organism is capable of fermenting mannitol, this is what the plate looks like after a mannitol fermenting bacterium is going on here. Again, very not so good technique, not good at all for isolated colonies, um, but it definitely shows you what happens when the pH indicator turns acid, the phenol red turns yellow as opposed to other staphylococci, which you'll see, which can grow on here, uh, but they don't use mannitol. So without the fermentation of mannitol, these microbes are probably growing based on amino acid hydrolysis or, or some other component of the media, because you can see that they are growing, but they don't produce an acid reaction. So you can tell this is likely a staphylococcus and certainly a mannitol fermenting staphylococcus. This is likely a staphylococcus, um, but not a mannitol fermenting one. So, so that, those are good differential characteristics in terms of setting out to look at your unknowns. Now, another media that you inoculated last week is not a selective medium, but it is a differential medium. So this is a medium that you will not use immediately upon getting your unknowns. 
the triple sugar iron auger slants that you inoculated, these are uh, auger slants that you inoculate with, excuse me, single colonies of bacteria, ideally gram negative bacteria. So this is what the, the medium looks like at the, beat, at the outset. You can tell from the name that it has three sugars and it has iron in it. The three sugars are, it's important to remember and it's important to remember the concentrations. The three sugars are glucose, sucrose, and lactose. And again, I wish they would just leave out the sucrose. There actually is um, an auger similar to this called Klinger's uh, iron auger. We don't use that one. So this has three different sugars, glucose, lactose, and sucrose, but they're not all at the same concentration. Glucose is at the lowest concentration. Glucose is at only 0.1%, whereas lactose and sucrose are at 10 times that concentration. They're at 1%. What that does is that sets up the possibility that bacteria growing on different parts of this, in, in different parts of this slant, might be able to use different sugars. Bacteria that are growing on the narrow part of this slant are going to have very little glucose at their disposal because glucose is at a relatively low concentration. So for a bacterium that can only ferment glucose, there's simply not enough glucose in that slant to allow them to produce an acid condition. However, if that bacterium can ferment lactose or sucrose, since those sugars are 10 times more concentrated, they can actually produce an acid reaction in the slant. So you can tell whether a bacterium is fermenting lactose or sucrose if you get a yellow slant. So, here's one, so here is one gram negative bacterium that was inoculated. And remember the way you've inoculated this is um, both on the slant and also to stab down into the deep or the butt of the TSI, so that you have bacteria growing in the deep as well as growing on the slant. This bacterium, because it's pr producing an acid reaction on that slant, must be fermenting either lactose or sucrose or both. You can't tell which. For the most part, we'll usually assume that that is a lactose fermenting organism. The fact that it produces an acid um, in the slant also tells you that it's um, very capable of fermenting glucose, but this really doesn't tell you very much. The other thing that you can see in this many times, and this is not a good example, is uh, gas production, because sometimes you'll see the slant begin to be pushed up or cracked and, and broken inside of the, inside of the glass, uh, because the bacteria growing in the deep will actually produce gas. Here's an example of a bacterium that is growing quite well in the deep portion of this, growing very well on the slant. But notice that in the slant, there's no acid reaction. So what you can definitely tell about the physiology of this particular bacterium is that this bacterium is neither fermenting lactose nor sucrose, neither one. But it is capable of fermenting glucose because down in the deep portion of this, there is, because there's more agar present in the deep than there is in the slant, there's actually more glucose, so the microbe actually has enough glucose at its disposal that if it's only fermenting glucose, it can produce an acid reaction. So this particular bacterium you know is a glucose fermenter, 100% certainty, and you know with 100% certainty that it does not ferment lactose, that it does not ferment sucrose. So for your gram-negative unknowns, when you have your gram-negative unknown from a McConkie auger colony or um, an EMB colony. One of the first things that you want to do is to inoculate a TSI slant. The TSI slant will hopefully confirm for you the lactose fermentation reaction that you got from your McConkie plate, for instance. If the two phenotypes, if the information doesn't jibe between these two media, um, we'll have to chat about that and, and see what, what may be explaining that. Now, the other thing that's particularly advantageous about the TSI auger is that it has I, iron. It has ferric iron in here, and it also has sodium, <laughs> sodium thiosulfate. Um, so what happens is that some bacteria 
if you're lucky, you'll get one of these because it's important for diagnostic purposes. Some bacteria under anaerobic conditions down here in the deep have the ability to reduce sodium thiosulfate to hydrogen sulfide. Now, hydrogen sulfide is actually a colorless gas, but that's why iron, ferric ions, have been included in this media because that colorless gas, hydrogen sulfide, will actually react and, and form a black precipitate with those ferric iron or those iron ions in here. So you can see um, a black precipitate, which is, indicate, which is indicative of hydrogen sulfide. You're not actually seeing hydrogen sulfide. You're seeing evidence of hydrogen sulfide production. But only certain bacteria are capable of, of producing this. So in many of the tables and charts that you'll use to identify your gram-negative unknowns, um, the presence or absence of hydrogen sulfide is very important in diagnostics. So this is why I say once you have isolated colonies on your gram negative, inoculating a TSI is particularly a uh, good part of your strategy. Now, what you'll also get this week, in turn, so, so you're going to get your unknowns this week, and we have another um, or a couple of other auger plates that will be beneficial for you. So I mentioned that the mannitol salt auger is very good for growing staphylococci, but not so good for growing streptococci. The McConkie auger and the EMB are good for gram negatives, but not gram positives. Now, some of the possibilities for your gram positive are streptococci. So there's a very good chance that you're, if you have a streptococcus, it won't grow on any of these three media. So what we also have is a differential medium. So, so this is phenyl ethyl alcohol auger. This is an auger which, true to its name, has phenyl ethanol in it. And for reasons, quite honestly, that are beyond me, gram-negative bacteria don't grow very well on phenyl ethyl. Phenyl ethanol auger. I have a hard time saying that word. Um, but gram-positives generally grow pretty well on here. So usually we have pretty good luck at getting the streptococci to, to grow on this. So another media that you'll want to inoculate your unknowns on almost immediately will be phenyl ethanol auger. Um, yes. Uh, again, streaking for isolated colonies. That will hopefully um, get you well on your way. So again, the biggest thing that we're going to be doing in the lab this week is just going over the, the TSI and making sure that everyone understands it you know, one-on-one -on -one with the TAs and with myself, making sure that you understand the, uh, how to interpret the results of your mannitol salt, your um, EMB, and your McConkie auger plates. And we're going to review, <laughs> we're obviously going to review how to streak for isolated colonies. Um, because another thing that you can do to, and should do with your unknowns, is to streak on just a plain tryptocase soy auger plate a plate that has no differential, no selective capabilities whatsoever. Virtually any of our unknowns will grow on that. And hopefully what you can see is different colony morphology, suggesting that you have a colony of a gram positive versus a colony of a gram negative. But as I said, you have two weeks um, and unlimited questions and, and help from myself, the graduate TAs, or the undergraduate TAs. So we will get you through this. It will be fun. It might not sound like it, but I promise it will be. Okay, I'll see you in the lab.